Hi everyone, I'm just going to yeah, talk about how to attract wildlife to your garden. Um, um, having a, oh. Okay, so firstly, why is it, why attract wildlife to your garden? Well, the wildlife habitats in the UK are in decline. Um, the species are also in decline, so hedgehogs, sparrows, song thrushes, and stag beetles. Um, and you can see some of the pictures at the bottom of the creatures that are in decline. Um, and wildlife plays a really important part in maintaining our health, a healthy ecosystem, so we really need them. Um, but how is it in trouble? It's because of habitat loss, so nowhere to nest, uh, loss of mixed farming, so they're losing out on valuable food sources, um, increased pesticide use, and destruction of hedgerows, so there's nowhere to nest. Um, so wildlife needs four things to survive, food, water, shelter, and a place to breed. So how can we help? Um, well, you can plant some trees and shrubs, any even small gardens can, you can put a tree um, into a small garden. Um, so these are really beneficial because, for example, as a, even a silver birch can provide habitat for 300 insect species. Um, and the flowers and fruits and leaves of trees, such as wild cherry, rowan and crab apples, will feed a variety of insects and wildlife. Um, oak trees as well, amazingly can carry, can hold or help 2,300 um, insect species and other wildlife. The trees are really important. You can create homes in your garden for wildlife. So you can just put up a bird box, um, bug hotels in your garden, um, frog pots and hedgehog houses. Um, even in a small garden, even on a balcony, you could stick um, on if you yeah a, a, a birdhouse up or something. Um, and then pull, and if you're yeah plant native hedges instead of putting up a fence. Or if you have fencing, maybe consider putting a hedge up instead. Um, offer a water source. So water is really critical for wildlife, especially in like cold weather as well. Um, so always, if you can, put out some water for them. So if you have room for a large pond, you can, well, that would also in, attract insects and amphibians and create a great water source for all animals. Um, you can create a small pond just using a washing up bowl or a wooden barrel and sink it into your ground. Um, even like a small dish of water is, is good enough. And if you can have bird baths, that's fantastic. You provide extra food, again, especially during the winter. Um, I guess you don't really want wildlife to totally rely on you, but they definitely need a boost, especially during nesting season. And as I said, in the winter, so you can put out nuts and seeds to attract birds like goldfinches, robins, uh, blackbirds, those wonderful wildlife. Um, you can leave mealworms for badgers, fruit boxes or wet cat food or specialist kibble for hedgehogs. And there's other, other ways you can help feed the wildlife too. Um, if you leave a pile of dead wood in a shady spot, that is amazing for um, wildlife and for insects and species of fungi. There are also um, insects that rely on it for their grubs to grow and they, they, they feed on the wood. So it's really, really good. And some of those species are the ones that are in decline, like the stag beetle. Um, they use it for cover and hibernation, and protection from other creatures and predators. Um, big natural logs are best, but obviously if you have a small garden, even just if you cut down even just woody material from your shrubs and place it in the back of a border, even that is, is great. Um, composting, it's a great way, it's amazing for your garden, it's free, free garden waste, free compost, you can put so seedlings into leaf mold and things like that. Um, and it's just, it's a great for your garden anyway. And it's uh, a great shelter for slow worms and grass snakes and other creatures that need to hide and keep warm over the winter. Um, plant lots of pollen and nectar rich plants in your garden. So plants that the bees can get to easily. So single flowered plants like the one in the bottom left plants that have the pollen on show, so like hollyhocks, um, single dahlias, 
um, asters, those sort of things. Um, obviously, they will, they can find nectar in other things, but um, if you really want to give them a big boost, those ones are great. Um, and foxgloves for bees with long tongues and penstemon. Um, and try and grow things for each season. So like in spring, you can have the pulmonaria plants. Um, and then obviously in summer, you've got all the dahlias and lovely things like that. And then in the winter, there's like sarcococca, winter beauty, honeysuckle. There's just lots of varieties where you can carry it out all over the year. Um, and plant up balcony baskets or window boxes with similar things like herbs and things, chamomile, any um, with the cyclamen, that you can buy for bedding plants, just that sort of thing as well will help carry them through. Um, allow an area of your lawn to grow longer. And so instead of just um there's no mow may, but also if you just if you just if you have the privilege of having a larger garden, you can leave just one bit long all year round. Um, it's really great for animals and small species to nest in and caterpillars to um lay their eggs and things. Um, and it will just really, really help wildlife again. Um, also, let an area grow wild. So if you have another small patch, or if you're happy to let your lawn grow wild, or just a bed, a border to grow wild, or one part of a border, and let the nettles come up, you'll get things like the peacock butterfly lays its eggs pretty much. Um, it really does like laying its eggs on nettles. So it's a really good, valuable source. Um, of yeah, nesting and um, food for the larvae. Um, don't be too tidy. So at the end of the season, when you come to chop down all the dead wood and stuff, maybe wait, leave some of it or most of it if you can till the spring so that all the animals and creatures can nest. And I read an article where ladybirds, to take off, they, they like to be a little bit higher. So if you chop some of the stems down of your plants, but only part way, so like your flocks and things where they die down, they rely on them to fly off. And they also nest, some of the creatures nest in the hollow stems of the of shrubs, of perennials and things. So if you leave them, it's very helpful. And the dead, the leaves on your beds as well, I mean, don't hide them away because firstly, they're great mulch. And secondly, creatures hide them then. Um, and I was gardening, I found a newt under one pile once before. So it's, yeah, it's really valuable and it's great for borders. Provide an animal highway, so if you can, leave a gap on the fence so the creatures can come through. If we think of all our gardens as like one big kind of unit, um, everyone, all the gardens are connected and the animals can roam around really, really easily. And don't use pesticides. Uh, it's really, and um, there's not really a huge need to. I mean, I know some things are really, can be really troublesome for some creatures, but um, it just decreases the amount of food for wildlife. It's horrible if you put slug that pellets down, it really, they, they hurt the wildlife, they hurt hedgehogs. It's just not very nice. Even when you're watching a slug ride, ride all around, it's just horrible. Um, but if you invite wildlife into your garden, there should be a peaceful balance and eventually it should all kind of tick over and take care of itself. And the blue tips and creatures take off the aphids from the, the your perennials and things. And it's, yeah, it works all together. So um, in conclusion, as I said, yeah, in, if you provide food for wildlife, um, your, the birds and the bees and the other hedgehogs and creatures and frogs and things will slowly come in. A water source as well to provide them with, to drink and birds also in the winter rely on water to splash around their leaves and it, the oil helps them keep warm more. So even having um, yeah, water in the winter is, it's just really valuable. Um, shelters, which are really easy to do, just wood in the back of the border, um, bird boxes and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, and that will also in turn provide a place to breed. So maybe just if you leave your gardens, try and leave them a little bit more wild and less tidy, not as tidy. It's just really, really beneficial um, for wildlife. So, Yes, hopefully that's um you can have some good information there. Um and yeah, hopefully I haven't gone over time. But thank you for listening. Hi Shep.